Hey guys, welcome to another video in my Linux Commands for Beginners series. And this time around, we're gonna be taking a look at variables. Probably something I should have gone over earlier, but it's an easy concept. I think maybe it's pretty cool to have a little break and just do something easy for a minute before we get into other items on the, on the series. But um, what I wanna show you guys how to do is how to create a variable and read from it. It's a very important thing. It's more important for scripting and programming, but it is something you're gonna run into when you're running commands in Linux. So let's go ahead and take a look. Back here on my terminal, I'll just give you a quick refresher. We have the echo command, which I mentioned in a previous video. Anything you type into echo in the quotes there is going to be echoed back at you. But the echo command is useful in regards to seeing what variables contain. So what we're gonna do right now is create a variable and then we'll use the echo command to uh, read that back. So I'm going to create a variable called hello msg, so hello message. And it's very common to put variable names in caps, but you don't actually have to do that. Now with no space, I'm gonna do an equal sign. And then in double quotes, I'm going to put hello world. So basically I'm creating a variable called hello message, abbreviated, equal sign. So I wanna set it equal to a string, hello world, and I'll press enter. Okay, so nothing happened. Well, actually something did happen, but you're just not seeing the output. Now we do have a new variable. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen. And what I'm actually going to do is read that variable back. So to do so, I will use echo and hello msg. However, that's not gonna work. It's just echoing hello msg. It's just, you know, the same if I say echo hello or echo random, it's gonna echo back anything I put there. But I want the actual variable. I wanna see what is inside hello msg. So when you refer to a variable on bash, which is basically what the shell is here, you have to put a dollar sign in front of it. That basically tells the command line interpreter that you want to refer to the contents of a variable. When you declare the variable, we don't have the dollar sign, but we do need it when we want to refer back to it. And you can see there that I get hello world, which is what we would expect to get. Now, when I, again, when I saved the variable, I didn't have a dollar sign in front of it, but to refer back to it, I will need to do that. And I could also echo the dollar sign question mark, get a return code, return code is zero, which means that it was successful, it read that variable back. So moving right along, let's create another variable. We'll do my underscore num, we'll set it to equal three, and then I'll do my num two, and I'll set that equal to 10. So just like any other variable, I could do echo my num, it equals three, and I could do the same thing with the other variable that equals 10. Now, one thing I do wanna mention though, is that these variables are specific to my session. So if I open a new terminal, I do echo my num, nothing. And the reason why is because the variable exists in this session, doesn't exist here. So if I close a terminal, I am going to lose those items. Now we went over bash RC briefly in a previous video. So I could put some variables in there if I wanted to retain them. But I just wanted to mention that real quick. But anyway, getting back to the topic at hand, I created two variables, my num and my num two, that are equal to three and 10 respectively. So perhaps a more useful example, I could do my underscore name equals in quotes, I'll put my name there. I have that variable, so of course I can not echo that back in case I forgot my name, in which case I'm just reminded of what that was. So I have a name, what can I actually do with that? So what I'm going to do is try an echo command. I'll do echo and then my name is my name, and then I'll end the quotes. Let's see what happens. It says, my name is Jay. So what I was able to do is refer to this variable inside another command. So to see a more practical example of that, I could do my dir equals, in quotes, slash Etsy. There we go, press enter. 
and just to make sure it saved it right. It did. So I can do now ls my dir. Now we see the contents of the Etsy directory are printed on the screen. Now obviously typing my dir is more characters than just simply typing slash etc. But if you had a very long path, it might make more sense to actually have a variable as a directory. So that just goes to show you that you can save variables and then refer to them in commands. So that way you don't have to retype something over and over again. If it's a long path or something like that, then you can go ahead and save it in a variable to save typing. And this especially helps when you have scripts. We're not going to get into bash scripting much in this video, if at all, but I just wanted you to know that that's generally where you're going to find this quite often. You're going to have variables and that's going to basically allow you to save some kind of information so that you can refer to that later. And what's fun is to see what variables are in your session. So if I was to do env and press enter, we can actually see a bunch of variables. Now these will need the dollar sign if you wanted to refer to them. So for example, we see I have a variable user, it's equal to me, so I could do echo user, but that's not gonna work. I need to put the dollar symbol in there. That just goes to show you that we still need the dollar symbol. It's not always going to be there, but basically this env shows my environment in my logged in session and all the variables that are included in that session or in this current session. And there's actually quite a few. So different programs might use this differently. For example, the display variable is one that I'll often use that refers to the monitor that applications will show up on by default. You can actually, and this beyond the scope of the series, forward your display to another machine. And I can launch a program on this computer, but actually have the program show up on a completely different computer. Basically, it's referring to X forwarding Again, outside the scope of this video, but just to show you that this variable is important and probably something you'll end up using at some point or another. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen. So I'm gonna create a new variable and I'm just gonna use lowercase because I'm lazy. And I'm going to make it equal to Linux. Simple. So let's do env. Let's see if we see that variable. It's lowercase, so you know what? It really should stand out because everything here begins with uppercase. But if I scroll through here, well, I'm not seeing it. So I'll go ahead and clear the screen. So what's going on here? Why, if I have this variable and it's recognized, I can even use the echo command against it. Why doesn't it show up in the environment? Well, it's not actually part of the environment unless I make it part of the environment, which means it can exist beyond my shell. So again, I created this variable right here, which we know it, it does indeed work. It's not an illusion. It gets an, a return value of zero. So we know that it works, but it's not in our environment. If I was to open a new shell, so I opened up a new terminal window here, and if I do the same thing, echo my var, it doesn't work. So let's try this a bit differently. I'm gonna do export, and then I'm going to type my var equals Linux, so I'm just basically declaring a variable called my var, setting it equal to Linux, but I'm putting export in front. What's going to happen? So is anything different here? So let's see. I'm going to echo my var. Seems to work fine. Echo code seems to return. I'm going to clear the screen. So now let's check out the environment again. Let's scroll through and see if our variable is listed. And immediately I see it is listed here, whereas it was not actually listed before we actually made this variable part of our environment. So that was a relatively easy video. I just showed you guys how to set variables and read them back. I also showed you that you can use those variables in Linux commands. Now, this is a concept that's gonna go you know, above and beyond as, the, you know, as your knowledge grows and you learn more things. So yeah, it's a very simple example, but the possibilities you can do with variables I think you're going to um, find that you can extend that quite a bit. I mean, you can, for example, you could have a script that takes arguments. Maybe you have a directory you give as an argument. It takes that argument as standard input, and then it refers to it in the program maybe 50 times, but you only have to refer to it that one time as standard input. And since it's a variable, 
you know, you don't have to hard code it that much time. I mean, you shouldn't hard code anything anyway, but it just goes to show you variables are something that are going to be, um, you know, a, a mainstay in your tool set, especially as your knowledge grows. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. Just, you know, make sure you understand setting and reading back your variables. Just, you know, give it a shot, play around with it. And then once you're all caught up, I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, make sure you check out the description below this video where you'll find links to my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server, second edition, as well as my Patreon page. If you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share it on Twitter or any other social media network. And be sure to subscribe so you'll be the first to see my latest videos as they're uploaded. Thanks again.